the pages crinkled between her fingers as she turned to the book of Psalms. Her fingers in those pages had spent many, many moments together over the course of her life. She found herself very early in the morning before the sun had arisen in the dining room with a cup of coffee and moments, moments in the Word of God. She sat down calmly and quietly as the sky would begin to turn its color at the awakening of the day. To be invested, to take that time to see and to hear God speak. Those moments in the Word, as God would speak by His Word. And as her fingers crinkled those pages before her, those well-worn pages, pages filled with the Word of God and margins filled to the brim with notes and color and even expressions as her pages were marked with places that showed her own life. Teardrops and thumbprints. It's God's word, and she spent so much time together over the years. And as those pages crinkled between her fingers as she went into the Psalms, it would always cause something in her. The moments in the word would cause moments in prayer. And she would come away from that word in times of joy and complaint, praise and thanksgiving, uttered from her mouth before the ears of her God, were names, names known globe-wide. She would pray for them. Names such as Roosevelt and Truman, Eisenhower and Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, and Carter, and Reagan, and Bush, Clinton, and Bush, and Obama, and Trump. And she would pray for them all, names well recognized, names well heard, but she would also pray for names not well known, names that were held and confined to the corridor of her own life. Mom and dad. Brothers and sisters. Her children. Her grandchildren. Her great-grandchildren. Prayers poured out before the Lord as prompted by his own word. Prayers of joy. Prayers prompted in sorrow. Prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of praise. Knowing that the Lord promises to do what the Lord promises to do, all the while as the pages crinkled between her fingers, as her eyes would rest on a psalm, as God would speak his word into her life, as she would be prompted to pray, and then she would come to one psalm. There would always be one psalm, and she couldn't see anything of herself in that one psalm, and at the same time, she saw everything of herself in that one psalm as her eyes caressed the words on those pages, as she would read that one song to herself, as her ears would hear those words, word by word, she knew it wasn't her, and at the same time, she knew it was everything about her. The psalm was the 22nd psalm, and as those pages crinkled between her fingers, she knew it wasn't her. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And she knew for all of the witness that she saw in the pages of her own Bible, all the teardrops now stained and causing more crinkles than not once in any moment of her life, were those words true for her. Her God had never forsaken her. She had been through much. 
She had walked through the valley of the shadow of death, yet in all of that, God continued to keep his promise to never leave her, never forsake her, to be with her always, even to the end of the age. And she looked at those words and she knew that those words weren't her, but they were everything about her. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And as those words caressed her eyes and resonated in her ears, her attention was turned to another, to one. The one about whom this word of the Lord in the 22nd Psalm spoke. The one. And there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus our Lord. And these words touched her soul because at the very same time when she knew that those words weren't her for her, God had never forsaken her. He had forsaken one, the one, the one, her Lord. And in forsaking, and in forsaking him, she was saved. And that God the Father forsook his son upon that cross, she knew by that death that she is saved. And she took in these words as her hands held tightly and gently the pages of God's holy word as she looked and took in and digested that psalm that she had never been forsaken, but Jesus had by his own Father on that cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me to save her? God forsook his own dear Son, born of the woman, born of the law, to redeem her under the law that she would be saved. And she held those words of her Lord ever so tightly. And she rejoiced in the fact that the Lord gave her this word that she could sit here at this moment, in moments of the word and in moments of prayer, knowing that it pleased her Lord, her Lord, who heard and answered her prayer. For those known to her and for those unknown, because God's desire for them was the same as his desire for her, that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, the way, and the life, the forsaken one. And as she took in this psalm, as she looked at that 22nd psalm, her eyes focused on the words of the Lord as the Lord spoke to her, and she took in the cross. Her eyes became so focused on the cross, her life on the cross, that it changed her prayer. And in the midst of all joys and complaints and supplications and intercessions, it changed her prayer to a, change of to a prayer of thanksgiving. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But have eternal life. And so she saw that this moment in the word and this moment brought in prayer was about her Lord the one forsaken on that cross, her Lord, for her, who gave his everything for her all. And that as those fingers crinkled those pages of God's holy inspired word, all of a sudden, we notice something about those fingers. We know something about those hands, those well-worn hands. As we look closely, we see blemishes and wrinkles. We see wear and tear. We see life. We see labor. And all of a sudden, as we look ever more closely at those hands, so tightly and gently holding on to God's word and the pages of his writ, we notice and we observe with all certainty that those hands are our own. So our own hands touching the very words of God. And as we see beyond the wrinkles and as we look 
at the pages of God's Word beyond our own hands. We are very much reminded of this same truth. Because there's one truth. The truth that was true for her holding the pages of God's Word in her hands is the same truth that is true for you as you hold so tightly and so gently God's words in your hands. As the pages are wrinkled in your agony and despair, and as they are flung open in the joy of your life, the truth is the truth is the truth, for, is, for there is only one truth, the way and the life, your Savior, the forsaken one, your Jesus, one cross, one crucified, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, your Lord. And in those prayers and in all those moments of prayer that she uttered before the Lord, that you uttered before the Lord, God's desire is the same for all of those for whom you call out to the Lord. His desire is the same, that His good and gracious will would be living and active in their life, that they all would be saved. as you find yourself holding in your very hands the God-breathed word, praying as a result of what you take in, calling upon the Lord in your moments of joy and terror, complaints and thanksgiving and praise. Let your prayer be in confidence, knowing that your Lord keeps his promise, that he hears and he answers your prayer. Let them be clear and let them be direct. Know that they are heard only on account of your Savior, Jesus Christ. such as this. Seven words. Seven simple words prayed through the notes of a hymn. Lord, keep us steadfast in thy word. Amen. Let us now confess this truth faith that God has given us in the words of the Apostles' Creed, please rise.